Long ago, when I was a kid, scale models were made of wood. Strombecker was probably the most successful purveyor of such kits. Their kits were not made of balsa wood, and they were machined much closer to finished dimensions than other kits. They made scale model kits before and during World War II, including spotter models that were used for training soldiers and civilian observers to recognize various aircraft. The models were painted black and had no markings, so they had to be recognized by shape only. These models were called spotter models. Here is a playing card showing a 2D version of the spotter training. So here are the overall plans for the DC-3. On the reverse are the instructions. And they tell you to start work on the fuselage, which is here. You can see that this fuselage <clears throat> being round was turned on, a, turned on a lathe. You can tell that by the, there's the turning center on the tail. There was one on the nose, but it's been probably been cut off. So the only things you really need to, to fit, to uh, further form are put the, the rounded nose and, and fare the, this cutout part in on the nose and cause this point to taper to a point as uh, shown in the instructions here. Strombacher provides a tool to do this. You're supposed to make your own sanding stick by uh, sanding, uh, gluing this on here, which I will do. Uh, if that's your only tool, uh, it has to be a fairly coarse sandpaper, which it is. They also give you a piece of finer sandpaper for finishing. I finished reshaping the nose and the tail cone. And uh, the next step, according to the plans, is to work on the, the tail. I should point out that unlike a lot of models of this era that just had butt joints to install the wings and tail, this, this model has uh, a cutout for the, for the tail to go through and the tail wheel would stick out here. And the uh, stabilizer is installed by by carving a round uh, tenon, I guess you'd call it, in the in the um, stabilizer and, and inserting it in here, which will make sure that it's got the right di dihedral, in this case, straight across. Uh, this is a big advantage over other kits of this age. I have to carve, these are cut out of a, of a sheet of wood, so I have to carve the airfoil section in all three pieces. Here we have the tail trial fit onto the fuselage. You can see that it fits on there very nicely and holds itself in place so we don't have to position it. So we'll, we'll glue it on now. After the war, Strombecker continued to, to their scale models and I'm sure that the line contains spotter models, and this was probably one of them. And they were upgraded to, to be more friendly to uh, younger builds. Okay, I have it glued together now. After the war, Strombecker continued making scale models, starting with a lot of the spotter models that they upgraded. I assume this DC-3 was one of those. The models contained more and more plastic as time went on until they finally issued all plastic kits. Then they completely left the model business. This kit is the second Strombecker model, the second model I completed uh, without any instruction, the first Strombecker model. The first model I completed ended up looking something like this. I think it was a learning experience, but also I picked a model that was way over my level of ability. The next step is to prepare the wing. If you, it needs quite a bit of, uh, of shaping of the airfoil section, but fortunately it's all one piece, so we don't have to worry about the dihedral. Well, the wings are... I hope glued on, we'll find out in a second.
Looks pretty good. Now we have to put the the cells in here. And they don't come anywhere near fitting, so they're gonna have to be fit. This is one of the few parts on the airplane that takes a little fitting. Here's one just set in there. Try the next one now. Well, here are the glued up parts. There's some pretty big gaps around their cell. I didn't uh, manage to keep them in place during the glue setting. So I'm going to have to try some filler. The filler comes with the kit and is 70 plus years old. I hope it still works. I think the, I think the probably 70 plus year old uh, filler powder mixed with a little Sawdust uh, came out pretty good, better than I thought. So I think the airplane is just about ready for paint. Uh, landing gear and so forth still has to be put on afterward. Uh, the DC-3 is probably one of the world's greatest airplanes. Produced in enormous numbers starting in 1935. It was the first commercially profitable airliner. Uh, was a major tool in the winning of World War II and I claim it's still in service today. Here's the finished product. I didn't even try to use the 70 plus year old decals. Aftermarket decals are available for this kit, but I wanna leave it like a spotter model, but I didn't have the heart to paint it black, so here it is. If you like this model, please give me a thumbs up and possibly subscribe to my channel. You also might like some of my other videos shown here or some of the videos by other folks shown here. Thanks a lot for watching.